Good day, good love, good light. Illuminators, way showers, guides of guides, guardians of Gaia, earth angels, ancestors, physical and non-physical beings, welcome. Welcome all of you. It is once again in deep divine grace and gratitude and honor that we join you once again today I, for this, I don't even know what to call these uh, hangouts, these, <laughs> these explorations. We've come- uh, Gatherings for ga sharing. Gatherings for sharing. I love that a lot. So that's kind of a new uh, name if you want. Um, my name is Wendy. If you're new to my channel, I'm Wendy Wolf. This is Dave Yellen and my channel Languages of Lights. Um, I've had for about six years now. I've got over a thousand videos, lots of stuff to share over the years lots of my journey. I started a website. So I don't know about a couple years ago, a lot of people asked me once I started making my videos, um, primarily channeling information through, uh, through the lens and through nature, through Gaia, explaining how all things are connected, how when we connect with nature, we connect with more of all that we are. And it just opened up all of these, these, all of this information, um, uh, connections to information, guidance, um, things I can, I, it's, I've only, can only begin to explain to all of you. And so over the years, I've just done the best that I can to share all of this information, the way that it comes through, the way that it has come through. Thank you to all of you who have been sharing my journey from the very beginning. So many of you have even sent me private messages recently. Um, and I wanted to thank all of you and whether it's been all these years or a day, um, it, I cannot tell you the humility and the joy that I have received and the gifts from the sharing of my sharing to you and your sharing back to me. And through putting myself out there, um, people have have wanted to know, well, how, how, what about, I want to know more about your journey and, and, and light languages and how do you activate it? How do you receive information? I told Dave, I haven't really shared my symbols in a long time, galactic symbols. I've been drawing them and sharing them for years. Um, information just started pouring through. And so the biggest message for all of you has been in all these videos and all of these sharings and all of these events that we've been doing um, is to understand information is always coming through and this is who we are naturally. And I wanted to really quick say hello to Beverly um, before I get too, too started. I just wanted to say hi to her. She's been in several of our live events and so many beautiful synchronicities. We've become really good friends over this, uh, these <laughs> last, gosh, it's been years now, it seems, hasn't it? God? And, and, and I realized too that it was because of, of me doing it scared, putting myself out there that this is how we find our, our tribe, our family, our soul families, our galactic connections, who we are, understanding what we're doing here and why we're here and what is the human and, and what is all this stuff about ETs and channeling and hybrid races and hybrid children and what does all this have to do with anything? And so uh, it's just, there's so much, uh, it's all about open contact and, and um, connecting with all of ourselves. And opening contact. Opening contact. And that's really what this has all been about is how did it, all this stuff open up to me? How can I share my process? Even that, I wanna start with a weird synchronicity. There's something that I've been saying for a long time. Um, and I learned it from Abraham uh, Hicks, uh, channel through Esther Hicks. She was channeling a being named Theo and I came across this saying and I wrote it in my book at the beginning of my journey and it really applies. And I say it aloud a lot and in my meditations, I, and you can put your name in there, um, I see and draw to me through divine love, those beings who seek enlightenment through my process. The sharing will elevate us both now. And the being was Theo. Dave just brought some candy home, some chocolate, beautiful dark chocolate, yum, yum. And the company is Theo. I was actually going to grab the chocolate, but it doesn't matter. It's just the reminder of being in that energy. And much of what's opened up to me the last few days, the last few weeks, the last few months 
um, in the events that we've shared um, uh, with Dave um, on Goddess Fridays, Beverly was a part of those, Wednesdays with Wendy, exploring, all of these sharings that we've been doing all, um, all, for all of these years has been just because I'm doing what I love because it excites me. And then people started asking, can you do sessions? Will you do sessions? And the funny thing is, is that I want, I was guided to share today, Dave even, that's how we met was I was doing um, YouTube. I had my YouTube channel and he even, he wanted to just have a conversation, book a session, if you will. And I really didn't even have a website or anything yet. And your words to me, I think almost verbatim or something about don't let money come between, you know, try just, let's just hang define out. Define the friendship. Define the friendship. Is that what you said? And so the funny thing is, is now we've come full circle uh, several years later and I, well, it's been what, 2018, right? See, I'm losing track already. And what is time? What is time? There is no time as we create time here on earth. And, and, and it's funny because that's sort of how the whole thing started and how I've come full circle in how I do my sessions now. And that's part of what I want to share was, it's kind of funny if people are a little confused now. <laughs> when they go to my website, all the information is right here in the description of all of my videos. Um, says the same thing as it says on my website, languagesoflights.com. Thank you for all of you for visiting. Um, and all it, it's just by voluntary exchange, whether you want to donate money one time, I've got uh, Dave set up where you could do a monthly thing. It, it equals, even the heart, largest one equals the price of one session, what I used to charge. I just realized that if I'm actually following the formula <laughs> that I've learned and I'm walking and I'm talking my walk and walking my talk, I have to understand, I have to believe that I will always have everything I need to do, what I need to do, when I need to do it, and I do. And because of that, and, be, and because of my belief in that, I am actually created the reality, I, the reality. I've created that reality where now I can do this. I, and so I was able to build a website, do all those things that I believed in, that I needed the money for. And yet at the end of the day, now it's, it's on a voluntary basis. Um, and yet I will say to you, it's about what I've received in these last several months and years has been the show and tell I want to give you guys is that's coming up in one of my videos is the sharing, the sharing of the gifts that I have received that are non-monetary. I am still reeling, reeling, reeling from a gift that I've received. I can't even, I don't even, I'm afraid to even talk about it because I don't want to cry. And I just got it this morning and and I'll be sharing with you guys. And I'm telling you, this is what we're talking about. It's the dedication and the love and the appreciation from this person. And I don't want to give, I don't want to let it out of the bag until I share it with all of you um, the way I want to share it with all of you. And I have, I, I have, I don't think I've ever been so humbled. And I have to say that all of this and all of you and Beverly sitting here today is, is, humility beyond words. I cannot even explain to you what my sharing, just doing what I like and love has given me in return. And so much has come through because of the vibration that I'm in now. And this is part of what I wanted to share with all of you today too, is because of this energy, because of this vibration, because of really doing what we love and more and more of it and literally following the formula, following your highest joy and excitement as far as you can take it moment by moment, as far as you can take it, as far as you can take it moment by moment until you can take it no further and having no insistence on the outcome and yet knowing and then keeping a positive state of mind that no matter what you see in your reflection, even if it's something you don't prefer, it is something that is there to, to give you, to, to sh you can still see the positive in it. And I know we have all experienced this, even in the last day, month, years, where you have seen now where a situation that looked I don't even know what word I want to use here. Unpreferred. There you go. We'll just keep it at unpreferred. 
um, what you what we have realized is as wow now I understand why that why that happened um, and so um, on my website too is a I have a blog on there. I don't really share and market this stuff. I don't, it, but, but I, the reason I'm sharing is because I've been sharing more on my blog, on my website. So when we have these hangouts and these events, like the other day I shared, I took, Dave took pictures of the cards that we drew. I put them on the website so you guys can see them more clearly. So you can feel the energy, close up, zoom in, download, whatever you want. Um, I've got lots of symbols that I've been wanting to share with you guys. Um, to use as you will, however is you're guided, because I, I received them. I just received them. Do I call them from my galactic families, from God, from source? Um, yes, 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 yes. As many of you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I started just using the sacred circuits from Sirius that were downloaded to us through Bashar, channeled by Daryl Inca. And I was activated and I started receiving them. I started seeing them in my dreams. I started writing them down. Um, I started getting more galactic connections, more angelic connections, more knowing who I am and understanding about my parallel realities and connecting to all of that and receiving all this information. I'm just like everybody else, just like you guys. So this is why I share this stuff so that we can understand we're always channeling. Yet it depends on what frequency and what your belief systems are. There's so many things that play into this. And so... Um, I wanted to share more of these things. So, and, and a lot of, and, and I even post things that are more personal pictures of Dave and I pictures of things that, that sharing my process, um, because I will say this morning, I even, I posted a video this morning of two doves that have taken up residence in the backyard, in the back corner of the house here above the shutters. It, it, all I, I was looking out the window this morning, getting, I had just woken up, just woken up, poured my coffee, had barely even had a sip. And I see these doves back and forth building a nest. And I'm like, and all of a sudden the downloads come and I'm like, okay, I need to go outside. So I bring my coffee, set it down and it just starts flooding in. This energy, this Michaela, this that I've been trying to figure out what this is these last few weeks the name kept coming to me, the name kept showing itself to me. And yet I didn't know where or who or what it was. And so we, we settle into this information and then it's like, okay, now what do I do with it? And then we wait. And then I started, and, but I ask, who are you? What is this? Where, what am I experiencing? So as I'm watching these doves this morning, this energy comes in, this being comes in, this frequency comes in and the message comes forth. This is how these things happen for me. And I think it happens for a lot of people this is for this way. And this is why we're in, encouraged to be in nature, look at nature. We've been, I've been joking, we've been playing birds, sound songs, like from YouTube on, just on all day long. And now Dave's laughing, thinking, we don't even know what we're attracting all day because we're playing bird songs all day. Who the heck knows? Maybe we actually attracted these birds, you know, and we don't, so... And that's okay, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually honored that, you know, and even my sister, when I sent her the pictures this morning, she says, you're going to have a baby. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, you know, it's just the way she said, it. and it was just so beautiful. And so all of this is about sharing. All of it is about sharing and me sharing my process and how this stuff came through for me, how it started. Um, I've explained lots of this stuff in a lot of my videos. I've been meeting a lot more people on Facebook as I've been sharing a little bit more on Facebook, which I haven't been. Um, and I'm not even going to get into all of those reasons, how much we all love and hate Facebook, but it's, 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 it's still a place for us to share. And I've met some amazing people these last few weeks and months. Um, and the funny thing is, is I did an event a few weeks ago, the tea ceremony with Astara and Beverly was there and I wouldn't have met her had she not decided to come back on Facebook for a little while and then me looking at more things. So do you see how we, we find each other when we're ready and Dave and I found each other when we were ready. And so um, I just wanted to put that out there that the gifts and the things that people have been giving and doing for me go far beyond um, even monetary. And now the thing that Dave has been working on and we've been working on too is this idea of 
creating not, not just equal wealth for all beings, but eliminating a, an arbitrary monetary system that doesn't work anyway. And that the value is in you anyway. And it's in your gifts, your abilities, what you have to share. It doesn't matter what it is. Your puzzle piece will fill the spot it needs to fill and you will have everything you need, everything you need. And I want to share something a little personal that I don't normally, Beverly already knows this. And I, I wasn't even, see, this is how I never know where these, these things are going to go. But I wanted to say to you guys that um, maybe that some of you don't, maybe aren't aware of a little bit of our personal situation and that Dave's step-grandson is a 30-year-old quadriplegic in a wheelchair who needs constant 24 seven supervision and help and assistance with everything. So most of my day now that I've met Dave and our day, <laughs> Dave's day <laughs> um, is really devoted to that schedule now. And so this is not something I would normally share outwardly in public but it's about the sharing. And I told Dave, I said, there's something that said to me that, it, that, that I needed to share this information and it, not for us, about us necessarily, but in a way, yes, because for you guys to understand too, we're doing it hard, doing it scared, working around what we've got, the time that we do have. Um, AJ cannot be alone for more than an hour, uh, more than an, uh, less than an hour, more than an hour. Did I say that? Did I say that right? More than an hour. And he's in a wheelchair. He needs to be weight shifted every hour five minutes and then back again. So um, a lot of process goes in the morning. Our pro Dave's process is a few hours long in the morning. And most of the time now um, we're making breakfast and doing normal everyday things like we would, you know, um, and then we start on with our day. So we have evolved and, and worked around all of these, but yet now we're coming into this harmonic, you know, place where now we're, we've created a space that was, that was another thing, the whole dub video this morning and, and Michaela coming in was about creating a space for yourself, no matter where it is, even if it's a little corner, but it's about creating a space about, it was more about rebuilding your spiritual nest. And that was what it was about, rebuilding your spiritual nest. And how do we do that? And what does that have to do with channeling? And what does that have to do with any of this? And who's going to be part of it? And who's going to be part of that? Who is going to be building that nest with you? And so all of these things, and, and I've shared my journey in all in all of my videos. As soon as I met Dave, and and um, realized my life was going to take a, a completely different turn, I completely changed my life overnight, literally overnight, and. Many could view our situation in many different ways. And yet um, I have never expanded more, been open more. The, the, the comments from you guys coming back to us um, has been, I, I can't even tell you how touching it is. And because all we're doing is just sharing our everyday life. This is really what we do. When we wake up, when we, we're making videos, we're talking about this stuff or we, and, 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 um, talking about his his um, outlook and 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 me learning about what it is to have tradition and ritual and learning about Hebrew and what does this have to do with light language? Because I'll tell you, many years ago, I started to get downloads long before I met Dave about the connection between Hebrew and light language and the first languages and the beginning of us, the beginning of humans. Um, God putting the first letters, the letters of light, the white fire, the white behind the letters. See, all of this starts to, to move into a new direction. And so all of these things I've been experiencing these, these years. And so I've been sharing these in all different ways. And what, one of the things I get really excited about is when I meet people and they're excited about something and they come to me because they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to what to do with it, you know? And so together we just push each other out, you know, off the cliff. And, and I have become so much more of all that I am because of all of you and, and the information back to us. And when we're just sharing our normal everyday stuff and doing videos together, 
they're almost always, I, I always spur of the moment. Now today, I asked Beverly to, to join us today. And it's funny because today is 3-31-2021. That was part of the whole message for me this morning was this 3-3-3-3-3-3 three, 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 three energy equaling today 15, um, which is a manifest day, um, equaling six. And so we've got this string of threes and I was hearing it over and over again, the Christ consciousness, Christ, Christ consciousness, Christ consciousness. This has been flooding Trinity. Trinity. It has been flooding with my, my senses for weeks now. And now it's during Passover and I'm opening up to more and more of this energy, opening up to more light languages, opening up to more of this, sharing more videos now. Now I've been sharing more videos. I've been guided to share more videos and doing and allowing more channeling energies through and um, speaking from different perspectives and allowing that information to come th through more fluidly. Um, Dave has had a lot to do with this with me in, in helping me open up my own voice, my own throat chakra. Um, there's a lot of stuff, even Beverly was saying, oh, you've got your drum. Um, because a lot of the stuff I haven't done and shared because I, I also have timid moments where I think, wow, you know, who is that? What is that? Because it's so strong, it, but it's, but uh, yet I know there's, there's always a beautiful energy behind it. And I know you can feel my heart because you, you, you respond in kind. So I wanted to take that, these, these opportunities to thank Beverly, to thank all of you for being with us, for being with me, to her, for being our friend, my personal friend who I can share these things with me and share, share things with her about um, my own personal experiences, our challenges, um, and something else that I wanted to share with you is as far as going beyond, I wanted to, to kind of throw this out there if you haven't seen this video, uh, these videos, and I'll put the link out there with AJ and his, uh, his opportunity um, as uh, being with the, the VA, the Veterans Association, as well as the, I don't want to get the, the Life Waters people, I will give all the links here. I've shared this before, um, and his, his being even a quadriplegic quadriplegic, but having the opportunity to go to go scuba diving. And so being that we live here in South Florida, we're near, we're near Miami and Fort Lauderdale, near the dolphin, the dolphin energy, that's a whole nother subject for another day. But the dolphin energy, the whale energy is all part of this bringing me to this area, the crystal skulls, the pyramids, all of these things are all part of who I am and what I love to share with all of you, our love of crystals, um being on the corner of the bermuda triangle and atlantis and there's that so all and our so many friends we've met that lately uh, with, uh, 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 or, and connecting with yeah. the crystal skulls in ways that we haven't in the, now we're really pushing this energy forward and feeling it so the reason i wanted to bring up about aj and and um and about the scuba diving is, is this something he never, ever thought he would be, be able to do? And the, and I just, because I love what I do and love taking videos and having sharing experiences, I recorded the whole thing. And then the uh, Life Waters um, uh, folks asked if they could use my videos to show people, you can go beyond what you think is possible. He never, it all happened by synchronicity. We have shared this in other videos and other live events, but it happened all by synchronicity and timing that if Dave wouldn't uh, been there at the time that they were and weren't you guys running late and the guy just happened to be walking out at right the, at the time that they were arriving and he's like, hey, do you wanna go scuba diving? And he's like, wait, what? Yeah, let's do it. Walk back in, the papers were done. It, so you don't know. What, by changing your frequency, you change the world you're on. You change the, you're not changing the version of the earth you're on. You're changing your frequency to, to move into a vibration of the earth that is more in line and tune with that vibration. And there's so many other things. I tell you, I could start a whole YouTube channel just about disability awareness. Um, my sister is also paralyzed. So I've had some, uh, a little bit of experience with this in my own family. So I just felt like somebody needed to hear this, it, that I wanted to share it. And if you guys have any questions about that, that part of our life um, or uh, caregiving right now, we are, we are at a point right now where we do not have a caregiver at all. 
Dave's it. I'm it. <laughs> um, we have one. It's just we don't have help. We just, right. And so, yes, exactly. So, um, and it's, it's uh, so there's, and the thing is, is it's not even for not trying. It's that there's just, there's no one trained to do this type of work and no one available to do this type of work. And so even if we wanted to find, we have friends who have disabilities, who have wives and families and children who cannot do it alone, who can't find help. So maybe this is a cry for help. Maybe this is a call for help to all of those people, to, to, to all of you out there who maybe if you're looking to change your career, maybe you've not been not working because of all of the situation. Maybe you've been looking to do something different. Maybe you, whatever, I don't know why I'm supposed to share these things, so I do. And, and, um, and Dave is always open to share. We're, we're always open to these things. So he always says to me, if you're guided to share it, please do. So and before we, we yeah. say hello to Beverly, I know I do want to <laughs> say that it w the how we we got involved with the scuba is a perfect example. Yes, of we were we had an appointment at the VA and we were late because we were in traffic and uh, because we kept in a higher vibration of looking at it as, oh boy, we're stuck in traffic. I wonder why we need to be late. That was the attitude that we always worked toward having instead of we're in the traffic. <laughs> when is it going to end? We're going to miss our appointment. What's, you know, what kind of problems are we going to have because of that? We didn't think any of those things. We, we, saw it as an opportunity and we're excited to see what that opportunity was going to bring us. So because we were late, as we showed up at the, at the VA hospital, it was in perfect timing for the recreational director to be walking in at the same moment that we walked by and we were, we met at the door who, who then said he was just walking by, we're doing scuba next week, this weekend. Do you want to go? <laughs> and AJ and I looked at each other like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> and AJ said, sure. And I said, okay. Now, and, there, and we were there. <laughs> now, we normally, you know, there would be a little heads up. There would be a little bit of time to coordinate. The idea of AJ scuba diving at all we like, was <laughs> like the last thing we ever thought would be even possible. But uh, and, and there are some activities that uh, spinal cord injury patients do that probably is not appropriate for AJ, but I would say scuba diving would have been on that list. But we said, okay, and we're just going to go with the flow and do it. And with almost no resistance at all through the entire weekend, he got to scuba dive not only once, but twice. It was amazing. Uh, both Saturday and Sunday. It was awesome. And it's uh, opening him up to the ability to uh, be certified. He just has to do another test. Uh, and he did complete uh, the book. He, compl he the completed book, the paperwork. The paperwork certification. Um, but to be certified, to actually be able to scuba in the ocean with a team of... Because it, it requires a special team. Uh, but to do it in the ocean, to be able to swim with the dolphins and the fish and see all the things that there is to see. Uh, but it's also creating a huge opportunity for a team of scuba instructors locally yes. to be trained for this type of thing, to be able to, to do the same thing with other quadriplegics or, or otherwise disabled people and not only veterans. So that did not exist in the Miami area before. Uh, it, it was actually a team of people that came down from, I forget what uh, state it was. Missouri, Missouri, I believe. It. Yeah, he is, is where they're um, stationed out of, I think. But that team of people are now trained people locally to be able to carry on that. Uh, and of course, Miami, what better place is yeah. there? For scuba diving. And we're hoping that it turns into a team of divers that can do this right here in Miami with the dolphins here, even in the Miami uh, aquarium. So, so 
So the so the idea of staying in a positive attitude no matter what right. brings those synchronicities together, and you just need to be in a vibration of of allowing those things to become visible to you, because the guy could have walked by and said hello, and if we weren't in a good vibration, he just would have kept walking. <laughs> yes, and even being in a good vibration, he could have said, "Do you want a scuba?" And we could have said. Oh, we can't do we that. We can't do that. And then he would have said, "Okay, see you okay, later." Okay, see you later. <laughs> uh, all of these things came together, and and staying in a positive attitude and allowing uh, the abundance to come in whatever form it is uh, brings these opportunities. And um, you know how it's exciting for us, but it's way more exciting for AJ. Uh, and hopefully, it's it going to be exciting for a lot more people who otherwise would not have gotten that opportunity. Exactly. So, so if there's any of you guys watching and, and you want more information, um, like I said, we'll put the uh, the links in the description and stuff so you guys can see it. I'll put a link. To, I do. I have a playlist on my um, channel, actually, and it says uh, AJ Scuba Diving, I think. So it is there. The playlist is there um, for you guys to watch it. So hello, Beverly. Hi. 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 There she is. I said, now we now let her say hello. Um, so it was really, and it was the synchronicities that brought today happening because Beverly had said how it, what did you say in the comment on the YouTube channel on the video? It was something about it had brought some things forward for you. Uh, yeah. Um, basically listening to you both talking um, um, and drawing the cards. And you know how you have these little conversations in your head, thinking this or that. And it was like at every turn, I had something to say about it, which normally I don't. Um, and, and one of them was like the chair, when you pulled the chair out. That was really funny. Um, yeah, with the, what was that? The wishing chair book? Yeah. It's I didn't even know that chair, existed. Uh, by Enid Blyton, um, which was one of, I didn't read as a child. I was uh, a child with um, learning difficulties um, because I was, uh, it wasn't that I didn't have the brain, it was I didn't have the confidence. One of my things has always been confidence. So I was a slow learner, dyslexic as well, so that didn't help. So when I found the first book, it was called The Wishing Chair. And it opened me up to another world of possibilities. Um, and then the next book after that was The Magic Faraway Tree. Wish, my necklace. I wear this necklace all the time. Mm -hmm. It says wish on it. And you just, the wish, the wishing chair. Uh, and and basically, part. you know, the book of the wishing chair is about uh, these children that get into this chair, just an ordinary chair with handles. And they don't know where they're going to be taken. They don't even know it's a magical chair and suddenly it grows wings and takes them off into a, another place. Now- Sounds like meditation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and obviously when you get older and you think, well, where did Eni Blyton get these, get these ideas from? Because when you look at the story of the wishing chair, as I put to you, you know, she, the chair was taking them to different dimensions see how and and it was uncanny you guys if you look i took i told you i shared it on my blog you look at the close up at the wishing chair it looks doesn't it look almost like the cover of the book yeah as the card it was crazy and we got the cards here we're going to pull more cards too because i'm telling you these things are so activating and if you guys look close up on the cards there are all kinds of galactic symbols i cannot explain it this is from Israel. I, I even saved the, the, so, and the, and she signs it. She signs the box. I'm telling you, this stuff is so activating. Um, and I did put the links in the last video to where to get this stuff, but that's why I saved it. I saved all the postage because I, it's from Israel. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm just looking. And no matter what anybody thinks, doesn't matter what your beliefs are. Israel is a very special place. Well, and we have to remember and, too. Yes, exactly. It's it is the holy place for I think for all. It's for it, everybody. Yes, and it's not just about religion. This is about higher consciousness. This is about yeah. all things connected. 
and that understanding. Yeah. And Christian and Christianity, and, and it's funny because we were talking about the Last Supper and how um, it really, I mean, that that is the Seder is the Last Supper, yet, it, you know what I mean? It's like how all of these things are so interconnected and we call it separate religions, but yet the stories Dave and I have been discovering and getting downloads about, they're the same stories just told from a different perspective, completely different perspective. How is it that we didn't see, really understand that that, well, we knew. Everyone has, how many people have said, if you wanna look for some, uh, what, did, what did you say, uh, evidence of ETs, look in the yeah. Bible. Oh yeah, definitely. That's, that's the go-to book. Yeah. yeah. Is it, I, well, I, I, it's funny because I do remember, and I found two uh, cards out of, the, out of the King Solomon Oracle deck that had to do with chairs, specifically chairs. I remember these. So I don't, we can show them. And I we guess. can but, share but them. One happens to be 13 and the other one I think was 29. Mm. So the idea of uh, the spirit <laughs> coming out oh. of nowhere. Look at these symbols on the bottom. Now, don't you guys, look, don't those, that is sacred circuitry if I ever saw it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? These cards are so multidimensional. That's what's so interesting about them is they have so many messages and they, every time I look at them, they're like so activating. And then there's always these symbols at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I mean, really. <laughs> they're quite beautiful as well. I know, they? they're so, the- And this other card the, here- The artwork. Is, so I want to say, get rid of the cobwebs because that's holding wow me back. and 28 is the date of my birthday um but and look at these symbols are just something else and the imagery mm -hmm. uh, i'll go close i'll zoom in oh yeah that's that's bringing in the geometry in that one all of it it's this is what i mean these cards they gather like everything that we're made of the star in the crack the, I mean, there's so much imagery that if I was doing, cause I, you know, if I, I haven't even used these for readings yet because they're just so in. See, I'm looking at that and I'm saying the cobwebs are the belief systems that say you can't get in the wishing chair and fly away. Get rid of those beliefs and you could. <laughs> these are incredible. Ascend to wherever you want to go. I just love these cards. And, 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 and it was Beverly that sparked this to use the cards and bring that into the reading and and um, and then invite you here because of the stuff that we've been talking about in the King Solomon stuff. So you mentioned to me too, um, these some additional, or you said a little bit ago, additional synchronicities about finding some things about your own connections to, the, to those ideas too. So what, what were you referring to? To like Jewish oh, connection? Uh, that oh, idea the jewish connection uh well yes um i think um i've been involved with with three different types of religion in one way shape or form i'm very open i'm an open book to all religions me too i don't diss anybody's religion um however i've Myself personally, I had um, two different feelings about religion, the, the, the God and the Christ energy. Um, the God energy from the Jewish perspective, uh, because my grandma, that's what she, she was involved with, that's what she did, and it was very sacred, extremely sacred, overpowering. And I remember this as a child, it had been overpowering. It was just something from within that was bigger than you could explain. You can't put it into words. Whereas the Christ consciousness from the Catholic side of me going to church, I, I found it very, very hard to identify with because it didn't have this overpowering sense of the God, <coughs> the source energy. And it took me years and years and years and 
literally only two years ago that um, everything, the synchronicities I was getting and the images and everything that I was being drawn to was the Trinity. And so for me, it was a journey of go back and look at the Christ consciousness and why I couldn't get involved with it. Why I, I didn't, it's not that I didn't believe in, in Christ, I did, but I didn't want to bow down to him the way that the religion told me I should. We just talked about the missing that. link. Mm -hmm. There was a missing link for me and, and it didn't resonate. And then two years ago, when I started looking at the Holy Trinity and what it meant and bringing in um, aspects of Christ, I started to get it. And I don't know if I've told you guys, I had a QH, QHHT session. No, I don't know. I don't think you ever mentioned that. Um, and that was interesting because um, I didn't get a lot out of it, but what I got made me smile because I didn't see myself as anything other than an energy form. And um, she kept asking me to go deeper and deeper and I couldn't. I was just this energy form and I couldn't really see a lot. And then out of nowhere, this vision came forward. And I remember saying to the lady, Christ has just appeared to me. Jesus, Jesus has just appeared to me. And she said, um, what are you seeing? I said, I said, I'm seeing a man in white robes. And in my head, I know it's Jesus. And she, and that's really all I got out of the session. So out of my, my session, I was an energy. Um, and, and I thought to myself, ah, now then, I'm trying to tie in links here as to why I've had this barrier against the Christ energy. And um, I thought, yeah. I wonder if it was Christ that invited me to come to earth to have another session down here. And um, then I've been down here and thought, did I really sign up for this? It's your fault. <laughs> and maybe it was a subconscious thing, <laughs> but you know, I've been asked to come here at this moment in time, in this time frame, to do something which I still don't know what. But like I say, all my teachings now that uh, uh, I'm being directed to definitely involves a trinity. Definitely, you know, um, I've always had a connection with the source energy. I mean, that's always been apparent, but they want me to investigate Christ consciousness and what it actually means. You know, uh, the Easter, the, the celebration, um, the link between, he was a man. He was a man, he was flesh and blood. He was, he was a, a Jewish man um, who had a mission to show us how to do something. And it got in, misinterpreted. Yep, it's so true. The whole, everything you're saying is just my whole heart has, and I have to say to you guys too, my whole heart chakra has been busted wide open these last couple of weeks. I cannot tell you. And everything that you're saying, Beverly, the thing is, the funny thing is, is that's why I said this morning, I knew right away, that's why we had to be together today because of the, the numbers. Three, 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 three. I wrote this this morning, all the threes, Christ consciousness, I looked at my phone today, it was 1221 and I took a screenshot of it and I wrote on it on Facebook, Christ consciousness, because I heard it, I feel it, I saw it, I've been walking it, I've been enveloped in it and mm -hmm. I feel the same way. And now, so I want, so you now in your investigation of, and, and of, uh, exploration of this and your connection to this, I do feel this, like, how do you want to express that um, to people? Um, well, it's a case of, it's a personal journey, isn't it? 
it's a personal journey because sometimes you can't change people's mind. They have their beliefs built into them. Uh, and some of these beliefs have probably come from other lifetimes as well, not just this lifetime, um, within specific families. Well, so, isn't that what, but isn't that what Jesus taught us, that, that being that idea that in, in his complete and unconditional loving allowance that he understand, I'm not here to change you. I'm just here to offer my vibration. And if you, if you can believe to match yeah. it, you will match it. And if yeah. not, I love you. It, yeah, there is no that, like you like you said. There's no. I've been the same way. I've never been really attached to any one religion. Uh, I've never been. I mean, I you know my my family grew up you know loosely Lutheran, you know <laughs> um, that kind of thing. But other than that, it just none of it made sense to me. When I met Dave, and I began to understand just the principles alone, it was exactly the same. It was all that is, everything's connected. The one is the all, the all are the one, um, the many names of God. I began to understand, like you said, that was powerful for me. It was standing at the altar even now is almost overwhelming sometimes because of the power behind it. And I too didn't, couldn't connect with that as a kid because of the idealism, the, the how it was being portrayed and even mm. argued with people in my family. And it's not that I said, it's not that I don't believe it. It's that I don't believe it the way it's presented to me. And, and what I understood, what I loved about, I even said something to his dad about ETs and extra, you know, and his dad's like, well, of course we already, you know, this is what I'm saying. That was never addressed when I was a kid. Any of those subjects were off the off limits. My mom would tell me, go ask the pastor, go ask the reverend. And I would ask these questions and they want nothing to do with those conversations. And it's like, so I didn't understand how could you ignore everything else in creation? And so when I, when I began to understand the principles and even the, just the, trust me, you guys, I know nothing about it, nothing about the Torah, nothing, nothing except for what I've understood and learned and feel and been downloaded. And um, it, I can't even explain the difference, the reverence, the feeling. I, that's what I wanted to feel all my life. And yet, like you, I pushed it away because it, it was it was so misunderstood and it was so convoluted in uh what do we call that distortion 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 distortion, distortion. and also other people's expectations or yes uh, people put in um you know it's it's like you walk into a church and there's the priest and like everybody puts the priest on a pedestal because he's the priest um and that's not what it's all about. You know, he's there to share enlightenment. Yes. Not to be on a pedestal. Yes, exactly. And that's what I was fighting with. This was my inner Hey, these conflict. people are not a party too. <laughs> well, last week I saw an amazing video. It was, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not very good at remembering the names. Dave will have to remind me, you know, the Jewish, um, part of the Jewish community that wears the, has the hair. Oh yes, we were just watching those, the Hasidic. Hasidic, Hasidic that's it, yeah. So in you London, know. <laughs> so in London, there's a huge community oh. in a particular part of London. Well, there's a few, but this, there was this documentary and it made me laugh. It, it was amazing that this guy who took part, he was so open because oh. all those, all those myths and um, holier than thou expectations, he was not it, even though he was part of the community. I mean, he was divorced. Um, he was asking the matchmaker to find. <laughs> we, know, his, we know all of them. And, um, <laughs> and the matchmaker was Gentle. finding it Gentle. difficult. I don't know. Have you watched? Have you watched Peaky Blinders? No. Oh, it's amazing. Well, there is a, a character in Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders is a 
a Birmingham set, a, like a series with these real ruffians. And uh, they'd be like, like the mafia of Birmingham. In <laughs> <laughs> and this was set uh, in the 1920s upwards. So um, these people went from rags, they were gypsies. And they, um, they worked their way up to having lots and lots of money. So anyway, one of the deals was with Solomon in London. Oh my God, and, and no there way. Was this guy, there was this Jewish guy called Solomon who was a complete devout Jewish man, but he was, you know, open to earning money from whatever <laughs> he could. So, so there was this similarity between, between this man I was watching and his slightly dodgy past. <laughs> um, you know, and it made me laugh because we can't look at people and automatically think of them in a certain aspect. Everybody is unique, is yeah. different, you know. I was watching uh, and, some of these Seder videos and Passover videos and, and um, <laughs> I told him, I said, you've been holding out on me. I'm like, you guys, I love the celebratory energy, the, the passion of it. And this isn't, this is every Friday night too, you guys, this is every Friday. It's not just during Passover. It's not, it's every Friday. It, it's yeah. every Friday. Yeah. It was for my Nana. And then the fun, but the reverence and the fun and the, how do I even, I can't even describe it. It's just so it's wonderful. I love the energy and yeah, but um, definitely that that energy that that is downloaded at that time on a Friday because I know I remember it with my grandmother. It was special. It was just so special. It was unique. Yes, it I, was unique. I, it's, it's you know, like I, it's like what I've longed for, and I didn't yeah. know that that's what I was looking for. And even just the little things that the little small things that I do do with Dave are just so. They're so powerful for me. And I, I'm like, and I don't even know why. And then I start to understand. And this is where I started to understand about all these other things. And then DNA and the ET stuff and how all these things were starting to connect. And how then when, when Bashar said in one of his events that it was the ETs that helped them across the desert and the exodus and mana, mana, we were, I, they told me, they told me to talk just mention that too you have everything you need to do what you need to do when you need to do it they yeah. provide it god will provide right you are god god will provide they so that brings into light this whole other story of the whole other perspective of like dave was saying well who was abraham talking to who was <laughs> moses talking to who were they really talking to well, would that, they have believed would... it was god yes of yeah course. When I am opening up to these energy, I'm pointing outside because of the, the video I did last night. It's like, when I'm opening up to these energies, I feel, I know I'm like, God is speaking through me. Cause I'm telling you guys, sometimes the energy is so strong. It's mm. unbelievable. It is so the humbleness I feel, the reverence, the passion. Um, well, since God is the master of the path of least resistance, he will always find a way to get the message across. Assist, oh, assist. I was reminded might... today, Reiki. What did Usui Reiki say? Mikhail Usui said, God gave me these five principles to live by, to live a more uh, peaceful life. If you follow these five, you know, and I don't know them by heart and I have studied Reiki, sorry you guys. But the mm -hmm. point is, what's the difference? And look at Reiki now. Look at Reiki now. Look at how it has now become more than it ever was before and how so many people open up to Reiki, open up through QHHT, open up through these other avenues. And then all of a sudden they understand, they start to see more and more of all that they are and the pieces, the more pieces of the puzzle. Um, that's why I knew today. That was why we had to do this today. I was enveloped in that Christ consciousness. And as soon as you started talking about it, um, and then I wanted to, there was something else. Oh, they asked me today with regard to the Reiki thing too. So who taught the masters then? We talk about ascended masters. Who, well, who taught them? 
Well, that, that's interesting because, um, yes, there are books to, to show you uh, Buddha's journey, um, uh, it goes out my head now, Krishna. Um, yeah, I mean, you can read up all these things. I mean, I found an interesting, uh, one, of the, one of the mysteries of uh, going back to Jesus now was, you know, as a child, I celebrated the birth of Jesus. Yay, Christmas. And then next thing, he's been crucified. It's like, <laughs> where did his life go? I want to know about Jesus. I want to know what he was like as a little boy. You know, because I'm human, I want to, to know his human experience. And the Bible seems to nicely omit all this information. That's why I like the old, the, the, that's exactly it. Because we understood he was a Jewish man who said, yeah. I don't agree with all this stuff. I don't agree with this stuff. And all I'm going to do is tell people how I don't agree with it. And I'm going to go travel the world at 13, I think it was, as the story goes or something. And he came back a more enlightened person. And what happened? He came back to well, and so, said, so now, he knows the story better than I do. <laughs> well, so when he returned to Israel, now in a higher vibration, things were more obvious to him because- Like they are to us as, now. As you raise your vibration, you become more enlightened and, and more aware of the things around you and you see the the contrast more obviously so he saw that things that were happening with the the jewish temple were much more distorted than uh intended and he spoke out about it so by speaking out about it of course the people that were self-serving that didn't want the yeah. the boat to be rocked uh because you know, of course, now we're we're back to the monetary system because they were making money. They were making money now. And yeah, always about it, the money. It's uh, see. <laughs> so so Jesus spoke out about that, and he, you know, became a, a target for those that didn't want the changes to to be made back toward more spirituality. Um, so then now we get to. The rest of the story, which is, uh, which I'm not overly familiar with, but uh, at that time, I guess the the Romans uh, were technically in control, but they allowed the Jewish people to do their thing. But they were, you know, in cahoots, and I guess the the uh, the the Jewish people uh, that didn't want uh the the more pure uh understanding to to be taught to the people uh secretly went to the romans to have jesus arrested uh and then then the crucifix crucifixion story and the last supper and all that uh that whole story continued from there um which is what people don't realize is, is the Seder is the Last Supper. And, and we, and I actually, I was looking up that uh, there are a lot of people who recognize that the Last Supper was a Passover Seder, but it, it was actually be able, they were actually be able, uh, were able to isolate the date of the Last Supper where it corresponded to the first day of Passover at, in that time in the year. So uh, it wasn't uh, a metaphoric Passover. It was, he was, and he was doing the, the normal Passover. Something about yeah. the dates this year. 4-4 four, four is Easter, so, 44, and it's the last day of Passover. It's the last day of Passover. Falls on Easter this year. That's significant somehow. I don't know how, but it is. So, of course, the other thing about um, Jesus um, was in his younger years and things that they um, um, omit from the from the New Testament. I mean, I've been to Catholic school and nowhere was I told, you know, like they said, that Jesus went away to study 
all around the world. Joseph took him. Um, his grandmother went with him. His mother went, but Joseph was his mentor. Joseph played a big part in Jesus' life. And they just don't tell you these things. For obvious reasons, when you know the story that Jesus went away to learn the, the masters, to learn about crystals, to learn about activation, you know, um, well, of course, people in power don't want us to know about that. And that's what Jesus was all about. He was there to teach us, to show us that in human flesh, it could be done, that we could be the masters of our own selves to reach the same heights. But we never get to learn that. Well, I will say to you, my, my dear, sweet, loving friend, that, you know, what you've just done, I could feel like what you're doing is embodying the Christ consciousness and I can feel it. I can literally feel it, the words that you speak and the truth that I feel in your words. This is how we know our inner compass and the emotional wave that comes through the knowingness of those words. It just you just know. And as you say these things, and, and you and I've talked over the last few months and years, as far as the, the idea of, you know, you feeling, you know, you're, a, you come from, you're a scientist, you come from a, a, a very logical minded. Um, and I didn't tell everybody where, tell everybody where you're from, where, where you're living right now. So everybody knows. Oh, I'm from England. Okay. So that way she, everybody knows where she's at. So she's, she's from there. And, and so, um, but this, this change that I've seen happen over and, and with a lot of people, of course, over the last year, because of the situation and um, we've all had, you know, many people have had to change, you know, their, their situation, but this coming into your, your own sovereignty, your own power, your own developing your own uh, um, inner spiritual guidance system, if you will. Um, <laughs> seeing you now and how different it is than it's been a while since we got to hang out in a video chat, like a while. It's like, I'm trying to remember the last time. And I mean, it's been months, I think, since you and I have chatted and the difference that I feel with you today. It's as if, it's as if this is what you're coming into is you bringing that information out to people and, and just exactly what you just said, because I, I feel it. I feel that um, maybe not on an, I don't mean necessarily on a, on a, on a maybe a wide scale or, or and, um, I, the word evangelical scale came to me, not on that scale necessarily, but this idea of there's a reason why, and I told, and we know this all the time, and Dave, I, I, there's a reason why I feel certain energies around him, and there's a reason why you're feeling this Christ consciousness too, <coughs> why all the three, 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 threes today, of course, because mm -hmm. this is, and it equals 33. 33 is the, the Trinity, the Christ consciousness, 33 vertebrae. If you guys look up the meaning of 33, there, your mind will just explode when you start to see all of the synchronicities that have to do with what we're talking about and the Merkaba and the Star of David. What were you going to say? Well, it just also reminds me of uh, Thomas the Apostle. Well, let's talk about that now. I'm glad you brought it up because this morning something happened to me and one of the 12 apostles. It, so today's date equals 12. As I was writing that in my journal, um, Dave was, we were looking up something else entirely yeah. about, I don't um, even remember now what. <laughs> I don't, so, and all of a sudden I said to Dave, I feel someone around you. I said, I feel a presence around you. Oh, I know what it was. What were you looking up? <laughs> what? The, the marijuana, <laughs> uh, different marijuana, uh, <laughs> hybrid, hybrid hybrid strains hybrid so let's just let's use, use the word hybrid because that's hybrid we were looking up well because and many, and many people say 
you know, Jesus is, is an ET that he, you know, and there's that whole side of that thing too. But so, so then I said to Dave, just, I said, do you want me to tell you when I feel these things around you? <laughs> do you want me to tell you things like their name and stuff? And, and then, so he's, and I think, he, well, he's reading and he's, the, he's like, well, well, yeah, you know, and I, I, was, like, I was like, okay, are you, you know, so all of a sudden I hear in my head, ask Dave, um, what is he doubting right now? Ask him. He, and then I said, I said, who, I said, who is this? And he says, he says, you can call me Thomas. And I said, okay. <laughs> so then I said to Dave, I said, well, there's someone here named Thomas. And he says to ask you, are you doubting anything? And then he said the same thing to me. And are you doubting, doubting Thomas? Are you Okay, so I had no, I swear to God, you guys, I don't, now I do not know the Bible at all. So now this is how dim I am when it comes to the Bible. So he says, wait a minute. I said, look up St. Thomas. I said, St. Thomas. So he looks up the island St. Thomas, because we've been looking at islands in Hawaii. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe we're supposed to go to St. Thomas. I don't know. So then I'm like, and then he says, oh, no, wait. Thomas, he's one of the 12 apostles. I went, 12? Doubting Thomas. Doubting, he says, that is the story of the doubting Thomas. I said, no. And I'm like, <laughs> swear to God, wrote it down. I'm like. So what's funny is he, his, his name also, they called him Didymus, which means twin. Twin. Yes. I know that. Don't ask me how I know it. And, how, I know and something told me this was the other reason why you and I, Beverly, weren't supposed to hang out till today was the, the, Mika the Michaela video had to come out today. The 33333 three, three, three thing had to be visible to us today. The energy, this, the Doubting Thomas had to come through today. So that was part of the message for everybody today too. Where are you doubting? Where are you doubting Thomas? Where are you doubting your own sovereignty? Where are you doubting your own Christ consciousness? Where are you doubting um that you are god this i mean this has been powerful shit and this last i was so emotional today and then when that when my friend sent me that gift that they sent me today i just couldn't take it anymore i was like i just the the the, the power of the humility of what this feels like you guys is just unbelievable and the humility i even feel just when he's speaking Hebrew, I'm not even, I don't even know what's happening to me. I'm like, why do I feel this way? Why what? I mean, it's like so amazing to me. And on Friday night, his dad lives in Pennsylvania and um, that's where Dave's from. And he called him on Fridays to do Kiddush every Friday night and they do it over the phone. And we stand there and the, the video I posted on Facebook the other day is pretty much what he does every Friday night ex with the exception of this was for Passover. So. <clears throat> and I've always wanted to record it because of the reverence that I feel. I literally light the menorah. We do the, you know, it's, I cannot explain it, Beverly. I, and then I wanted to say to you, how do yeah. you pronounce your last name? Levy? Levy. 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 Well, Levi is one of the yeah. 12 tribes. 12? Yes. 12 but tribes. Remember you see the thing is the whole, the whole the whole thing about you know uh, my connection my jewish connection um because i wasn't born levy remember that i'm not i'm not exactly jewish. but isn't that weird but, how that yes how i but, through my own discoveries of some synchronicities feel that i'm from the benjamin tribe I have no idea why, but I just something, one thing led to another and I started researching and the breadcrumbs led me to that. Um, so very interesting. And I think the other thing that you were talking about- and that's his tribe, uh, Levi. Levi, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't change my name. For some reason, that is my name. Even though it wasn't the name I was born with, but it, it was my name. It feels good. good. It feels yes. right. Um, last week you were talking about the Elohim. Yes. And uh, there, there was that was when I was sort of um, 
thinking about uh, the energy of God, the energy of source, and how um, it is so powerful. You felt it. I mean, I think anybody who's never participated or watched a Jewish ceremony oh. on a Friday night, you it's can't lovely. describe it until you until you participate in it. And I've never participated like you have, where you've gone through the whole thing and the readings and the whole nine years. I mean, it's it's a thing. It, it is. I mean, it, I, I didn't understand a word of it. I was only little, but it was very powerful. But the whole thing about um, source and God is, is the power. And that yeah. we, in our third dimensional you know, rise into five dimensional, if that's what you'd like to choose to believe. Um, we just can't grasp the power because it's too powerful for us to understand, even comprehend, it is. which is, you know, when going back to Moses, I feel that, you know, and the Elohim, um, Moses really had to have an interpreter because he couldn't have in his human form, even, understood a little bit of what was going on you know um god is too powerful it's like throwing you into a nuclear but you know into a, a full nuclear blast you wouldn't survive so you need interpreters you, you need people you need this other intermediate because have you heard of the rainbow bridge it always comes up in my head of course, the rainbow of course. Bridge. <laughs> You know, and you go and uh, up the rainbow bridge and somebody comes to meet you, one of the angels, if that's who you want, you know, will meet you at the top of the rainbow bridge um, to help you translate the messages that you feel are from source. Because it's hard for us to do that in, in, this, in this form. I believe that each of us is an interpreter of source um, for each other. Did, was there something you wanted to share? Well, I just wanted to say one of the things that I found talking about uh, the Apostle Thomas was just a, a little article, but it talks about um, weaknesses that, uh, that the Apostle Thomas had, but it says that and, and I'm reading this because when you connect with the Christ consciousness energy and with Jesus and with, with uh, that type of vibration, to keep this in mind, all the apostles had weakness and lack of understanding. We must not exaggerate these facts, however, for Christ did not pick worthless men. But their human weakness, again, points us to the fact that holiness is a gift of God not a human creation. It is given to ordinary men and women with weakness. It is God who gradually transforms the weakness into the image of Christ, the courageous, trusting, and loving one. So the idea of self-worth and the lack of self-worth that <clears throat> is embedded in everyone, mm. there's, there's no reason to have that. And you should really embrace the connection that you have uh, with the Christ consciousness and with Jesus and, you know, however he appears to you. Uh, and that same energy is shared in many, many different ways. And, um, you know, it, it, could, it could be like, for instance, uh, when we, even when we watch certain channelings of the IL, you could feel that love of God yes. in those energies and uh, in higher dimensions and higher frequencies, that love of God is present all over. So it's all part of you and you're bringing all that through however it comes through. Uh, some of it is labeled so we can understand it and uh, apply it a little easier um, because we've left breadcrumbs for ourselves to follow. Yes, we have. So <laughs> here and in this now, we have breadcrumbs of 
things in the Bible. Uh, n there's distortion in, in everything. Uh, you know what? But we, we have breadcrumbs. You just, okay, so I'm just, and breadcrumbs. You just reminded me because we leave, okay, this is a book filled with many of the most beautiful works of art ever created by all the greats. And I just happened to be thumbing through it the other day for a very specific reason. And these are breadcrumbs. These paintings that have been left for us. Let's call it the Last Supper. How would we even have any idea at all? I should have looked, I should look it up and see, because I know it's in here. I know it's in here because we've seen it. How would we, any of us, have any idea what that looked like? if it wasn't for Leonardo. So what's funny is because there's only now and we create our own past in the now moment that the now moment, when we look in this book, we will see paintings it, that we might have never seen before because yep. the person who we are now and the frequency that we want to embody now doesn't include a book that has a paint, you know, a painting in it that it now has because our breadcrumbs now ready to be seen. We're at the next breadcrumb. We exactly. Open now we see a painting so, that, that actually might not and, have even existed. And I'm before. laughing. I'm watching this girl the other day talking about how we get answers from source and how she's she she channels the uh, the being this being from the Yael. Um, I love her. her. The being is called her name is Hyla. The girl that uh, channels her is, her name is Philippa. I'm hoping to have her on my channel. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. She's so much, she's awesome. So anyway, but she was talking about how, and this is what happens to me too. You guys talk about sharing my process. So I get a name, I get an energy. It's like the Christ consciousness and you're going, no, not me. You know, why me? You know? So she says, all right, prove it to me. She tells Hala and she says, I'm just going to pick up. And she used a, a Nintendo technical book every question she asked was answered in this book so this energy has been coming through to me ever since right around passover started this michaela michaela and i'm thinking what is this what is this who are you you know what is your where you know and all of a sudden i i, I see this video and i thought i'm gonna i'm gonna do that with the art book i kid you not you guys one after the other after the other i was like because i was trying to hone in on it feels when i feel this energy and this is new this is a new feeling for me it feels like i feel like that like the christ consciousness like that abraham energy that um and so i was trying to it was like is it a being is it a fractal in me is it you know and it's almost and like dave always says yes 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 um, but so I'm looking this up and so I opened it up lilies, carnation, lily, lily, rose. Well, this is one of the things lilies is also one thing we were just talking about last week in our in our last thing we did, we, we showed about your lily. There's lilies and all these stories, but the, this was after that. So lily, so then it's like one after the other, the Madonna with the long neck. Uh, oh, this one, the Roman Capriccio. So it's like all of a sudden the stories that you're just talking about. So then I said, I'm like, okay, what energy is this that I'm feeling? Why does it feel so big and so all encompassing? You know, wh who are you? Like, so what comes up is the agony in the garden by Andre Mentegna, I'll show you the picture. And if you look up in the corner, are angels. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay. Get what, so many, get so I could, many. I could just feel, and then next to it, the Cardinal, which is, a, yeah. a, you know, the Cardinal. Again, that's all linked in with the Christ energy, isn't it? Yes. So everything uh, very pointed. Much. And then they said to me. With the apostles sleeping under him and not noticing. That's what this is about. This is the, yeah, the apostles are sleeping. Yeah. And that's Every, the story. Everyone else asleep. 
Is, it, is that Gethsemane? Did we say? Is that the garden of Gethsemane? Um, I think it's a, the agony in the garden. Let me see. It says five angels appear to Christ mm -hmm. as he prays, while three of his apostles sleep in the foreground, unaware that Judas and a crowd of soldiers are on their way to arrest Christ. Mm -hmm. Every aspect of this scene. The bizarre rock formation, the imagery town, the imaginary town, the rigid folds of drapery um, is painted in stony, precise detail. Montagna was of humble birth, but was adopted and taught by a minor painter, becoming one of the most important artists of his time. His style is that of other Renaissance artists was inspired by ancient Roman sculpture. Many of his works are in fact executed in, and I don't know this word, I don't know that word, I don't, grill, 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 I can't, a painted imitation of marble or bronze relief. For much of, the, of his life, Montagna was court painter to the Duke of huh? I can't remember, Mantua, for whom he formed a major, this is really small, collection of classic uh, works of art. He was also a pioneer in the art of engraving and his engraving on classical subjects was later to influence Albrecht, Dorier and others. Can you <coughs> Where that's at, I can't. The, it's really small. I could take a photo so you guys can see it. But here it is. Brings me to a picture of what are we talking about? Christ and the angels and the apostles. So right away I knew this this being, this energy I was feeling, this Michaela. Then I then I told you guys in the last video. I look up the meaning, and it's like uh, that of God or or that that translation, and it's a Hebrew name the Hebrew translation of the female version of Michael. And then when I was seeing all these energies and the blue and this blue violet energy, then I posted pictures on Facebook um, and I think on my website too, a picture of this light that keeps coming in through these windows. And every time I see it, I feel them. I feel them. There's this, this energy, this blue violet energy and, 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 um, I don't even know how to describe it sometimes. I can't even pronounce it. I know it's, you can't. I'm not sure if those are locations. I, I don't know if it, yeah, exactly. And then I was hearing the founders. Um, and then, uh, um, and then, so then I come across a painting, the builders. And I heard the, them, them telling me we are the founders. And so it was like, all of this energy was coming through. Um, and then we're talking about Christ consciousness. And I come across, and then they said to me, who is Our, like God? The precious, oh, who is like God? That's what Michaela means. The precious book, the Bible, the Torah. It just was a feeling I got when I saw the picture. I have no idea if that's what this is even about, but that was the whole uh, Gwen and John. So it was about precious books. I've also been guided to um, put more books together. Put, put a, not more books, a book. I have never written a book. Putting well, a book video, together. Like we, you just showed me. Which one? Oh, that was another thing. I'm, it's a whole other, that's a video for another day. About books. But yeah, about books and writing, which has been another message from them to everybody that I haven't even done a video on yet. Um, and then these angels came through, the angels of Psyche and Cupid. So every one of these kept were, were messages for me. And this is what I want to explain to people. If you ask, it doesn't matter what book you pick up and any, it doesn't matter what the book is. If you put the intention out to give you an answer for something, it will, because it's you talking to you. It's your higher self giving you the information you're looking for. It's infinite intelligence receiving your question and giving you an answer the only way that they know how through physical reality, through doing these videos, through us sharing this stuff, um, through me sharing my synchronicities, these cards, however, this stuff comes through. So um, 
ordinary. This is, I mean, we're, we think, okay, I, I just opened to this page and it's just filled with angels and the sun. That's see, what I'm, you that's see what that I'm again. Well, the sun, Ra, but you know, we're talking about again, you know, you're talking about the angels and translation and in uh, sending messages, the in between us, the in between us, you know, um, so that we can receive these messages a little bit more clearer. And Israel, Israel is the holy place, is Ra El, just like Dave and I were talking about the other day, is Ra El, that sun energy, the, the I am energy, the L energy, Elohim, elementals, elements, the building blocks of all things. Um, um, uh, tie, tying in with, um, again, uh, going back to Christ consciousness, can you remember the the dream that I had a, a couple of three months ago now with the um, first time I'd had somebody come through and tell me their name. Yes, I do. Um, that doesn't happen for me ever. So that, you know, um, for him to come through in the way that they did and show me what they showed me, it was all to do with the Holy Spirit and um, surrendering. Wow. That was what that dream was all about. That's what noble friend. Can you remember? Um, yes. Elfwin. I remember Elfwin. that. Elfwin. What was the name? Elfwin. Elfwin, and that is predates it predates Roman times. Wow. Um, in in Scandinavian Netherlands that way, mm. uh, but what Elfwin showed me was the running stream energy, running stream. He was on one side of the stream. A beautiful horse was on the other side of the stream, and he laid down. That's right, the horse. And he laid down with his arms outstretched, his legs outstretched. It, so he was in a cross position and he looked up at the horse and the horse did the same thing. And their eyes just met. And it was this, this, I am no different to you. This energy, the stream, you know, you've got to look at what's going on. Um, and he just turned to me and says, my name's Elfwyn. And it means noble friend. I, I I mean, that's just such a beautiful story. Is it something that you feel like you could channel further, that there's more information to be brought out? Um, yeah, definitely. You know, I think when the time's right. I when was going to say, that right. would be fun to explore. You know, you always have a place here. We can always do a, a private video. This is one thing I want to tell everybody too, like Beverly here. And even Dave will say to me, just do it. You don't have to share it. You don't have to record You record it, but you don't have to publish it. Everybody's watching it. Maybe, right. It doesn't really matter. First of all, he always says, first of all, what people? There's no people. This, you're the only one in your universe anyway. Second of all, if you're receiving it, um, perhaps it should be shared. Maybe it's just for you. A lot of my messages and the downloads that I get and the, and the even and to entities and beings that come to me. Sometimes I just realize they're just for me. They're my develop from my own inner development and it's not necessary to share it. There's, you know, um, but yet something tells me and, and I'm a centaur, I'm Sagittarian. I'm very weirdly, oddly connected to horses. We are surrounded oddly by horses. Here in South Florida, Southeast Florida, we have all around us ranches and horses. It's very interesting. Mm. I, where I grew up up north, north of Chicago, that's where I grew up in the north sub northern suburbs of Chicago, almost at the Wisconsin border, right on Lake Michigan, equestrian everywhere, horses everywhere. My grandparents had a farm and they had some horses. So 
something I've been always around me. I lived in Tennessee for a while, lots of horses there. So when Bev shared this dream for me with me, I just felt this reverence, like, like she said, this bowing to each other. And, and, it, and, and it reminds me of my relationship with Ranger is that it was a mutual honor, you know? Yeah. It was hard yeah. to explain to people, but there was this, he was never, I mean, I, I didn't, I wasn't dominant over him. And, 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 and yet, of course, there has to be times when there's that alpha energy that, you know what I mean? That, you know, just because mommy says so kind of thing, but there was a deep, deep connection. Yeah, it was such a, because I saw him as an equal part of my journey. Yes. He was yeah. an equal to me. And I think that's what that dream was about. It was about, yes, you have to surrender in order to move forward, progress. You know, you're at school, you're learning, but at the same time, you are no different. You, exactly. you are, you know, everybody's here as a alert to learn or to teach. You know, nobody's any better from anybody else. And that's the most gracious thing I receive in everything I do is that I know, and I say it all the time, but I believe it in my heart of hearts that we are always teachers and always students. I learn so much by these sharings. I learn so much more about you. I learn so much more about who you are and what your gifts and abilities are and what you have to share with the world. And this is when we become sensitive and people, you know, have sessions with, you know, it's, it's really just helping each other identify what's already there. That's all it is. That's, it's, it's really all that um, we give each other permission to open up more of who we are. And that is like, that is the best gift you could give somebody is to help them become more of all that they are. And this is what I get back in these sharings is I get to be more of me. They get to be more of them, but we become more sensitive and then we start to recognize the sovereignty in others that they don't see for themselves. And then we, by just simply being who we are, like, as you were saying earlier, we can't change anybody. We all we can do is just beat our own drum, walk around and be the light that we are and quit dimming it. Cause you're, you know, it like, Abraham said, you know, you, and I guess in a nutshell, you know, you can't get dim enough or poor enough or sad enough to, you know, you can't, that is not where you need to meet people. You need to be who you are and allow that vibration to, to bring to those to you who need you, what, in whatever way they need you. That's all this is about. And that's the gift of the sharing. Um, there's so many beautiful synchronicities. I don't want to keep you too much longer. I know it's getting a little late too in the UK and um, I'm looking at the time here myself. <laughs> I lose track because I love what we're doing so much and I know it's getting late for you. So um, this has been so exciting for me because the one thing I've been wanting to do this with you for a really long time and, but you see the energy in you is so completely different and funny how even the little bit of nervousness that you may have even, um, I felt none of that today. Absolutely none of it. Like, I'm gonna show this. yes, please do. Well, is that the castle? Is that a castle? It's a book. Oh, it's a book. Elfwin. <gasps> Although the, the, that, that was the first spelling that yeah. came to my mind was Elfwin, but the second spelling was different to that. And it's with a G, right? Elfwig? Well, um, E L. What was I it? think it had a PH or something. Oh. I've got it written down in my book. Okay, I was say, it's in my messages, my private messages with you. So I yeah. know. So there is. So, but, but, have you ever looked up the name to see if yeah. you. Yes. Um, Elfwin spelt that way just means friend. Elf win the other way. Oh, that's, means right. No friend. that's right. And what did you find? Uh, oh, there's also, it's like Anglo Saxon or something. Right. English. Uh, joy, pleasure. Oh, yes. Uh, 
A E L F W Y N N. Joy and pleasure. Well, that's kind of nice too. Uh, she was the she was the ruler of Mercia for a few months. Mercia so, is in Spain. Is that where in England? No, Mercia is Spain. Oh, Spain. I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. Oh, Spain. Uh, medieval period of the British Isles. Following her mother's death on 12th of the June, 918. 918 is, it, is Ranger's birthday. September 18th, 918 is Ranger's birthday. And it says, follow, was the ruler of Mercia for a few months in 918, following her mother's death on 12th of June. 918. She was the daughter of Ethelred and Ethelfad, the rulers of Mercia. Huh. Her accession was the only example of the of rule passing from one woman to another in the early medieval period in the British Isles. Oh. Maybe that's a thread for you, my dear. Maybe. I never found that. But yeah, that's huh. Interesting. So, Very interesting. So I'll tell you, there's some stuff here that might be pertinent to this this particular elf win spelling. Because this is the thing. Why would Dave even look it up? Why would he, you know what I mean? This is the about this is the weird part about breadcrumbs. This is how this happens with us. I will say that to him. I feel there's something around you. Oh, they say it's Thomas. Oh, what about this? Oh, it's St. Thomas. Oh, look at this. Turns out, you know, and I had heard in my head, asked Dave about the doubting Thomas. I didn't know that that was the story. And then if you go on, there's more about it, about Matthew and my son's name is Matthew. Um, there's all these other weird little synchronicities that when I was reading through about the little story about, about Thomas, uh, the apostle, and I looked it up, Thomas the apostle, and I started getting all these little, just little synchronicities. They're all little threads of more and more of telling us who we are. It's our higher self showing us who we are. We are not conceivers. We are receivers. That's it. You've we, got to interpret it. Yes. <laughs> and that, that's receiver, quite difficult sometimes. And the transceiver. Hmm. Yes. We are the interpreter. So, I mean, this is just, this is so amazing to me how all of these things come into play. And I didn't really know, we've, we've talked just a little bit, but I really didn't know of your experience with, um, you know, that Hebrew side of you and how prevalent that was with you and how this, you know, the funny thing about meeting you and you meeting and then, and, and then Dave is about, I feel that balance with you. Like you encompass both sides of that coin. That, that to me feels very, well, everyone's unique, of course, but it, it makes me feel like that it gives you just such a, a much, such a beautiful, unique perspective but now you get to add your own thing to the Trinity. You now you've got this, you've got this. Now what is this and this plus Beverly? What is her, you know, um, what is that voice? What is that voice? That's a whole different voice, that voice. So, um, and, and yet, and it's like, I hear her, I hear them, I hear your, your stories, your information, the way you explain it is no different or less valuable than anything I have ever shared in any video. People need to understand this, you guys. It's, I'm just sharing what I'm getting. That's it. I, I cannot explain it any better. It's just, I just share what comes out of my throat, <laughs> what comes out of my heart, what comes out of I, the words, I will tell you, I will not remember 90% of the words we've, we've shared today. Mm -hmm. What I'll remember is this, the feeling, the what, where we go from here, the next thing that just got created because of this thing now, 
that's where I'm going to go with that because something new now got created and something new now that the three of us created together, but yet this is a, a whole new you. Like I'm, I get so really, I do get goosebumpy. Um, it's funny because, sorry, Frank. No, no, please do. So that character was, was uh, included in a, television series on BBC called The Last Kingdom. So it's just sort of funny that, you know, <laughs> you're sort of from that area. Uh, I haven't seen The Last Kingdom, so I don't. A British historical fiction television series adapted from uh, Bernard Cornwell's book series, The Saxon Stories. So uh, the first season was on BBC and then Netflix after that. Oh. Uh, uh, continued it to at least the fourth season. Uh, has to do with King Alfred the Great and the history of separating kingdoms into what would become England eventually. So it just so happens to have all but, the stuff to do with you and the British yeah. Isles and, and England and the kingdom. And there happens to be a TV show about it. Mm -hmm. And I, so I will remind everybody, if you haven't caught, if you're new to my channel, and you haven't caught some of our Goddess Fridays, of which most of them Beverly was there. <laughs> um, wow. This is part of what we did, was Dave and I would dress up in different costumes to explain the breadcrumbs. That when you dress up this stuff, you go into costume, um, we ignite this energy. And how the basis of Goddess Fridays was built upon the idea of movies, television, music, um, how all of them depict everything that we are, that they are reflections of what we are. When you see this stuff in the background that we have here, There's a relics. Um, in the series. Oh, so this is what she looks like in the series. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. I'll have to look. I'll have to see. Let's put it side by side. Let's see. Let's go. Let's see how to you guys Beverly. looked. At, let's look. You and yeah. Beverly. So see, she yeah. and Beverly. Look now. Look, <laughs> dude. <laughs> uh, Mer was was Mercia in England? Was that um, anywhere near Stonehenge? Ooh. Well, we'll have to look at them. Let, me, let, me let look her look thing. it up. See, this See, is, this is how this happens. Maybe she, we have to remember you guys, mm -hmm. all of this stuff is, we're all over souls of over souls of over souls. Mm -hmm. There is no reason why you wouldn't be connected to her. Now let's talk about reincarnation for just a second. You guys, that doesn't mean we are her. She is her Beverly's Beverly. She's her, but that doesn't mean from an over soul level, that oversoul didn't create both beings in two different timelines, two different beings, two complete. That's what we're tapping into. So this, no shadow of a doubt, is a being who's part of Beverly's oversoul, who Dave, through Dave and through infinite intelligence, has received this information to show Beverly more and more of who she is. What it has to do with Dave and I now will be for our explanation as well, exploration as well. Because now we know, because it reminds me of our Goddess Fridays and why we were doing it to begin with. To show everybody, TV, movies, all this stuff. It's all you, all you, all you, all you. All the superheroes, all the gods, all the goddesses, all you, all breadcrumbs. Which ones do you identify with when? And what for? And what, what, what do you need in that moment? Why? Why do you go see that movie? Why do you identify in that moment with Wonder Woman or Isis or God or, or um, uh, the nature spirits or the elementals or the fairies or the, uh, why, why? Why in that moment are you interacting with that idea? It's not your past. That's not your past person. It's not a past version of you. It doesn't work that way. East of Wales, it says. East of Wales. South of Wessex, or, or Sus north of Wessex, in Sussex, London. Now that, that is strange, actually, you saying that, because in the news a couple of weeks ago. Here's your map, guys. Yeah, 
Ah, yes. Well, um, Wales have decided that they want their stones back from Stonehenge. What? Um, yeah. I have, and I have a friend that lives in Wales too, a couple of them. So that, that made me laugh because um, I don't know much about Stonehenge, I'll be honest. You know, it's a monument that everybody around the world well, knows. We know um, a little bit more about it through Bashar events. And I'm going to tell you something weird, Beverly. I did a video. I haven't. Dave's yeah. Dave's no Dave's working on yeah, that's it. part of he's Dave's working yeah. on it the editing for me because uh it was about Stonehenge and it was about the reasons it was used it was from the stone speakers of which I channel I am speaker new my very very first video I ever made you'll see at the very bottom in the description says speaker new and you funny you should mention that about the stones because I did not know that and it's all about the video was explaining about the Shaddox, which Stonehenge is, and how it used to have very slivers of stones hanging in between the gaps. Mm. And when you touch them a certain way, they would make a certain sound. These are gateways, gateways. They're oh, definitely actual, the gateways. They're yeah. portals so that you could they're travel portals. through different dimensions by making- And Christ them. went there. Christ visited Stonehenge. He went to England twice. See? Um, to I be didn't taught. even know that. I didn't yeah, even know. Yeah, in a book I was reading about that Christ went to England twice to uh, be taught by the people of that time. Um, well, what do they call them now? The local, like the priests of the time that, that were to do with Stonehenge. You well, see, all that ties into the picture I sent to you. Yes. Of the angel over Stonehenge yes. on the eve of the equinox. Exactly. I remember that. And so, that's what's so weird about this is the timing of this. Because like I said, he's still working. The reason he has to edit the video is because I, it's, I was doing it on my phone and you only get 30 minutes on your phone. So he's got to stitch them together for me. It's not something I normally do. But this was a very interesting explanation. And, and, but it, part of it was because Bashar talked about how the Shaddox are, were used and how they were used. And literally, it was really a weird synchronicity too, because then I found these, they found these chimes and they're literally these ag, slivers of agates that are different oh, colors. Yeah, yeah. Full slivers of real agate stone. And that's what they used to do. So Stonehenge used to be one of these places where that's what you did. You you walked through it, but the cre the sounds that it created through that, I think you would go inside and I, I don't know if there's someone else on the outside creating, it was like the, a musical instrument. You talked about, was it before we started recording? You talked about an instrument you just saw that was crystals that were used as a xylophone that are custom made and they were out of stock. And you wanted to tell me about them. That's part of this. They use these crystals for this information. See, this is what people don't understand. This is what Jesus was learning. That's why he was a master teacher, teacher of teachers, because he was learning about that energy, vibration, resonation, uh, how they use crystals. How did they use Stonehenge? He was taught by the local masters everywhere he went. Yeah. And, and it was all to do with him ascending. Yes. Everything that he was learning was for his ascension. Um, and he had to go through these rituals and learn about them in order for him to ascend. That was what it was all about. And isn't that what we're doing as masters yeah. of limitation? The masters, yeah. the masters, they, they keep telling us, you guys are in the master's class. Most people, people, beings, energies don't have the guts to come here because it's dark and you just, nobody wants to know what it's like to be separated from God. There are beings who cannot believe that there are beings that don't think they're connected to source. They, they can't even fathom that. We're here to teach all that is 
how to go to the deepest, darkest and come all the way back and tell our stories and live to talk about it. Because in a few years, we're all gonna be very much higher vibrational beings, receiving, sending information, cross-channeling all day long with all these different beings, which is happening to all of us now. It's been happening to me <clears throat> for quite some time now, where now there's other beings and other parallel realities who want to know about us. We want to know about them. They're asking about our ascension. There's, there's, as, uh, there are versions of Earth that have already blown themselves up by nuclear war. Um, if, if other beings we channel are giving us higher consciousness education to say, you guys don't have to go through that. We're not going to tell you how to live because you get free will, but we're going to offer our perspective on how to offer you guys a different way to see your world so that you would see mm -hmm. things from a more powerful position because you came to, to feel what it's like to, you know, let's talk about slavery. That's what this is all about. This whole thing about the Exodus and Passover and Jesus, it's all about breaking the chains of your own inner slavery. That's all this is. It's all in your mind. And perceptions. Perceptions. And, and at this, this moment in time where we have the internet to share uh, with like-minded people or not but it doesn't matter what your view is because every path is different your path is different to mine my path is different to to joe blogs down the street if he disagrees with me that is fine it doesn't matter exactly. and i think more people are now sort of sitting back and relaxing and saying okay I can have a different perspective. I can accept your perspective. Doesn't mean it's right. Doesn't mean it's wrong. And I think we're moving into that era where people are are more able to listen to one another without shouting and having an opinion. <laughs> oh, well, maybe exactly. Not. Isn't the whole idea of having an opinion is because you feel like you need to sway someone else's thinking. Once you understand yeah. it's not about swaying another person's thinking, it's no. about being the you that you are and letting anybody who resonates with you it it's not exactly it is about surrender and allowance and the, why is that yes. the hardest thing for us humans to do why i don't you know even i still don't understand sometimes why is it so hard for me to surrender to what is and allow and allow the path allow the process um you know since the day dave and i met and i moved in here I met Dave on a weekend. I'm I, in person. I met him in AJ. I met him. We hung out with a bunch of other people through an event that I did for the very first time, sharing my light languages. And it was as if the moment I saw them, I knew that there was another life, another parallel reality in which we existed. And yet I had honest to God had no way of realizing, no way of even imagining in the relationship that I was already in that that was even a thing like it was a, so the the weeks following is when it when the realization came to be that then i realized what i knew all along and all those things but the 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 idea that and and if you guys been watching my videos for a while and and the idea that the, the, the lifestyle that we're living now um, and, and really form a relationship with a person and then being in a relationship in this particular circumstance, um, Dave and I haven't really been alone. I mean, alone, like oh, even, well, really even alone in the house at all, but alone outside really, except for maybe a couple times going grocery shopping or maybe uh, out to dinner just a little for a short time. Um, but it's not a normal circumstance. And yet, um, I also ask myself, why would I put myself, why would we put ourselves in a position where we meet for the first time and start a relationship in a circumstance where we literally have none of us have any privacy, not really. And then that got into a whole nother discussion about us as humans. 
and the need for privacy. Why do we want that? And, and so that's a whole other ball game too. But it started sparking, it started uh, igniting questions about these things and from a human human condition standpoint, I guess is what I want to say. Um, so, but yet from my own, why would I create this reality for myself if it's not what I prefer? But yet I have to know and trust. I have to know and trust that following my heart and, and that this is the path to my path of least resistance. That even though it looks very zigzaggy and we can't even sometimes see the way out, you know, it's like we just know that I have to, as Bashar says, appreciate, acknowledge, appreciate, and allow. Yeah. And well, it you know, it is we 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 don't know our path. I mean, all my life I've never known my path. Mine has been a zigzag backwards, forwards, sideways, you know, um, and as you know, um, I've recently left my job. Yeah, it's worrying. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know that there's something else coming along that I feel you know, my destiny is you know, somewhere else. Even my son sent me a message of a little while ago. Um, he still lives north of Chicago and... Um, He's like, you know, I just, I, I've got, I have to leave my job. They cut my salary. I can't get unemployment. They will not, they denied him unemployment, denied him unemployment. So it's like, he's got it completely, but, but again, it, what often looks like the zigzaggy way is your path of least resistance. Just because you can't see it that way today doesn't mean it isn't. You know, what I have always thought. That's where the trust has to come in. It has you know, to. The, it has to. The, the surrender, the, the, the belief that there is something else going to happen. Because and that's my life. The ones who create the reality based upon our vibration of what yeah. we believe is possible. So, Bev, tell me when to stop. So, yeah, we should wrap up. It's getting late for her in the yeah. UK and we should get going too and have ourselves some, we got to feed AJ too. <laughs> God, you know, are you joking? It's magic. Hearing messages from spirit. I am a clear channel for messages from spirit. No more cards need to be drawn today. I thought we were going to do some more King Solomon's and you know what? Nope. Oh, that's perfect, isn't it? What else is there to say? Yeah. This is so amazing to me. In and case you were doubting anything. Just in case you guys were wondering, in case any of you were doubting, in case you, Beverly, were doubting. You exude it. And the... Thank you, St. Thomas. <laughs> thank you... Michaela, yeah. thank you, St. Thomas. Thank you, Elijah. Thank you. All our helpers. All of our helpers. Yes, I was, I'm like, I'm naming more and more. Mm -hmm. It's like all of our, our as we said today, all physical, non-physical reflections, the diamond, diamonds, that whole idea of diamonds has been very strong. We're coming tomorrow's the beginning of April. The uh, first stone for April is diamond. Um, again, happy birthday, all you fire Aries signs out and, there. And this one just happened to be also there. Oh my God. See, you guys can't make this shit up. And it also was a rose and that the, there was that Lily Rose painting earlier. I accept and embrace my inner majesty, accepting what is. Is that our confirmation message? Accept yeah. What is? Yeah. And if we aren't an example of that, I don't know what is. <laughs> so see, sharing, you know, giving glimpses into all that we are and all who we are. And that is the one thing I have to say about Dave, that from, from the moment that we've been together, and I mean the moment I crossed this threshold, never once has he ever 
nothing has ever been off, lift, off limits for me to share, talk about. If I feel guided, he says, I feel guided, then you're guided for a reason. So there's nothing that we don't have, that we won't share, can't, you know, don't feel comfortable sharing um, anything that we've covered today. Um, if you guys have questions about personally, privately, um, you know, and Dave and I too are, are open to do private sessions together, if that's what you guys want. I've even asked Dave if he wants to do them all by himself. <laughs> you know, just in case, you know, but um, I really feel by sharing our true life, our, because the thing is, I, I work really hard every day. So does Dave. We, he works hard with me and I work really hard every day. I'm a human, just like everyone else. And I work Not really, <laughs> I work, I work really an hard applying, <laughs> applying these principles every day in my life and asking myself these hard questions, hard questions, you know, after raising a family, having grown children, do it. Why, 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 why? Yeah, why? Do that. That why? You know what why I mean? And, and um, uh, it's just, the whole thing and to watch the dedication, the unconditional love that I get to witness and have witnessed in the last year and a half is beyond comprehension, you guys. It's like, I can't even describe to you what I get to see every day. And um you know, AJ cannot, he has no feeling from what, like here down, yeah. right, Dave? So, and he really can't move his head. He also has a, a brain injury as well as a spinal cord injury. It was in a motorcycle accident. And um, oh, he's, he's got rods in his neck to prevent him so from he being can't, able to So he has really not much- A lot with his head. Not much peripheral vision. Um, and he does need to be fed. He needs to be all of that showered and all of those things as you can imagine. Um, and I will say, there's a lot of people, I've been shocked, Dave and I too. We didn't even know interabled was a new word because there's people now putting out videos, interabled couples, meaning one of the couple is their, either their caregiver, complete caregiver, but they're their husbands, their wives. They're living, this is, but see, this is a thing. This is, what's, this is what people need to understand, that you can have a relationship. You can go scuba diving. You can open yourself to things you never thought possible for yourself. And let's just take this up another notch, just a little bit, that when we open ourselves to the frequencies to move into a version of reality that is opening to first contact, opening to new technology, we don't know what's in store for him the new things that are gonna be available to him. We don't know what's gonna be in store for us, the new things available to us to help him. We don't know what facilities are going to be available. You guys, there's nothing available for him, nothing. There's nowhere else for him to go, for him to have a life, uh, uh, you know, where he, I don't know the statistics, maybe, you know, you'll have to tell me what they are, but I'm telling you most, most people in his circumstances do not live at home. They can't, they just can't. They don't have the, the care, the, all of the things that are necessary. And one day Dave woke up and guess what? <laughs> so what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So the, and the examples of when things don't go your way, when um, people don't behave in ways you think they, that they should or you want them to, everything is a reflection for each other. And yet the unwavering dedication and unconditional love, um, and this is what I wanted to point out about the inner able couples is it doesn't matter what's going on in their relationship, they still have to care for each other. That person still has to care for that person. So this is what we're all doing for each other. When we're sharing these things and our stories and our processes, our real lives, it gives us each permission to be the most you can be with what you're given. And as healers and all these things, it's none of your business 
my business, our business, what anybody does with the information we share. None of our business. None. It's none of our business what these, when you give somebody a gift, it is theirs to give, do with what they choose. These are our gifts. Nothing more than that. These are our gifts to share with all of you in that maybe you'll become more aware of something, more enlightened, help your ascension journey. Maybe it shows you a different path. Maybe it makes, makes your life look a little bit better. I've said that many times to Dave. AJ sits most of the time outside in the, in the front getting sunshine because he can't regulate his own temperature. That's always a tricky thing because we never know. Or is he too hot, too cool? He mm -hmm. can't feel it when he's hot. So, but the point is, I have many times heard from my own guides when people are driving by every day in our neighborhood and we live in a just a normal neighborhood when they are watching aj sitting out there and he's talking on the phone and he he is able to use his phone with his mouth that's a long story dave will have to explain mm -hmm. it all but because of technology um maybe somebody's driving by going hmm maybe my day's not so bad after all mm -hmm. So just by him existing and sitting in the driveway, what message is he sending to people every day? And what message is he sent? What message are they sending when Dave's out there helping him and assisting him and feeding him outside and doing these things? Or when AJ's friends come over, AJ has friends come over. He has relationships. Yes, he does. And so we work through all that too, him having relationships. And how does that, how do we work? How do we work with all those dynamics here in this house? What if we did have somebody living here caring for him full time? All these things are things that we literally deal with and think about every day. Um, but the point is, is that he has relationships and now his friends come in and start to understand how to help out, shift the wheelchair, feed him, bring food over and, you know, uh, watch movies with him. All of this is things that I don't think he ever, or even Dave ever considered that by his allowing his ability and his believing that he could do this, Dave's believing that he could do this. Um, most people are very surprised that, um, that AJ lives at home. So it's about you being you, no matter what you're doing and always being a reflection and never underestimating your power of just being, existing. Bashar once said something to the effect of, you will never have more impact than you have right now. But as you like wake up and ascend, and that's just my throwing in there, you will become more aware of the impact that you already have. And that may be a bitter pill for people to swallow because they think, oh, I got to do more and be more because I want to have more impact on the world. You can't have any more impact than you already have than just being yourself. That's it. Whatever that self is. And Dave, I'll tell you, he's put up with a lot of the different selves of me as I go through my own belief system and losing and, and releasing my own limiting belief systems. You know, he'll listen to me ramble for an hour, not say a word as he watches me move through my process, <laughs> like a fish going upstream. <laughs> and, you know, and it's, but that's, that's part of what this is, is that he wants to experience all these processes with me. I'm telling you what, I lost it this morning. I totally lost it this morning. All of this energy coming in, my whole heart chakra is so wide open and the the comments and the images, I mean, and the things that I receive from not only my guides and the channeling, but from you guys, personally, privately, on, on social media, comments on the videos, it's almost sometimes emotionally overwhelming. Like, like Bev said, it's so big that you understand how little we think we are. It's just so big. And I have had that happen to me even where Jesus, that, that energy, I was in meditation one day and I swear it was like that being like came into the room and it was like weeping. And I said, you need to stand back because I don't, it's almost as if you feel as if you not deserve it, but <clears throat> it's so big that I was like, I can't handle your energy because it's so pure 
Mm. I don't know how to feel in your presence. Like, because it's reminding me of my own light, but our belief system still can't wrap around that. It's a weird thing that happens. So I thought, I feel by me sharing my process, our lives, Bob, with you, the things that we've shared, your process. I hope this helps you open up to more that you are, that you come and share more of all your, your perception and your perspective of infinite intelligence and bringing that out to the world in any way you're guided to do that. Um, I've really been guided to do more, a little bit more writing. Um, and, and I've got a stack of all these journals and books. And so that's, that's a subject matter for another video, a short video, but so see how my guides give me all of this material to work on. And so it does, they give me ideas and I write them down and then I allow the universe to bring me what I need to expand upon all the information. And so we, we were going to do this hangout. Um, when were we going to do this yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. We we're going to do this yesterday and it got late and stuff was happening. And then um, it just, it was like, nope, it had to be today. It was just perfect. So I wanted it, you know what? It, it couldn't have been yesterday because with the full moon, I had a, a headache for 24 hours. It was so intense. It was so strong. I had to just, I just, I couldn't even bear the sun. I mean, this is the first week we've had sunshine, beautiful weather. And I had to go and lay, lay on my bed um, and it lasted 24 hours. And, you know, the energy from the moon was pretty strong. Do you feel it when you say energy? I, I just want you to explain to people. Um, so how do you feel? Do you feel, does it feel like a bad energy? Just an, uh, what, when you say the energy and I, because I felt like I needed to lay down too. And so I just, I was like. Well, since the new moon's been coming on this one, um, uh, I noticed it last week. I just uh, like the life was drained out of me. So tired. And there was no reason for me to be tired, but I felt like I'd been on a 10 mile hike. And then as the moon became full, boom, headache. So intense energy around this moon for me, but the moon, I'm a Cancerian, uh, the moon always affects me. But this one was a super moon, so it, it did, it got to me yesterday. So I'm pleased that we didn't do it yesterday. Uh, hey, and it's the, the moon, actually, Dave and I, we didn't share this the other day, but um, I forget was it, what night it was already, but we uh, went out and we're looking, you know, laying under the, literally laying under the moonlight and fell asleep to like, I don't know, three in the morning or something outside. Um, but it was like this, this whole download of even being bathed in that moonlight energy of the, the approach of the, that the super moon was I even told him that I said, this was intense. I felt like when we were laying there, it was like, we were like completely getting downloaded with all of this in information. Um, and it, and it has been an intense 48 hours. It's, I can't yeah. even describe what I've been feeling. It's like this yeah. momentum, this steam. I'm probably emotional as well. Yes. Very emotional. Oh, I told, that's what I told Dave this morning. I'm like, I'm just such an emotional. Yeah. You know, it, Tears, laughing, you yes. know, it, it's, um, yeah, really quite, I mean, that, yes, that that's why they call us lunar ticks, right? At the full moon, right? Lunar ticks. So, well, it, it, uh, one of my friends in the house, in my house here, he drives children with special needs um, to school. Oh. And um, so we were discussing the moon because yesterday when he came home from work, you know, I said, oh, I've had a terrible headache all day and I'm going to have to go to bed. And he, and um, so today when we're discussing it, I said the full moon. And he says, oh, tell me about it. Them kids, them kids. <laughs> they always start on a full moon. <laughs> he says, I'm telling them, don't touch that. Get your head in the window. <laughs> you know but it's true i worked in a school and when there's a full moon you know about it full moon <laughs> or if it's windy it. if it's windy as well the kids just go Wah. that's funny again, we just had a day where it was really windy i think it was yesterday and it was like blowing stuff around and we were sneezing it's so it funny that you mentioned that because i said because spring's coming in the pollen's coming in the air and it was just like my nose was, and our nose was really stuffy after like laying outside that you know night 
And so um, it was just kind of funny that you, that you said that, but we're all becoming more sensitive to our celestial friends. It, it said that the, the full moon magnifies whatever energies you happen to be feeling. So, True. you know, even if you're releasing negative belief systems, the full moon aids in releasing it more. So you're going to- yeah. That's so true. You know, I got to tell you guys too, Dave bought these for me. I've been, I held them up before, but I wanted to show you guys this because a lot of people have been home, <clears throat> you know, from the virus and they've been, actually I've been very grateful because a lot of people have been hanging out that would have never hung out before on social, you know, like in Zoom and stuff like this. So this is just a message for all you friends, family, parents out there. So a lot of times when Dave takes AJ to rehab, um, I'm doing sessions, private sessions, or I'm recording videos. Or, so he bought these for me to hang on the door. Hi, puppy. Hi, baby. Hi. Oh, puppy. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. <laughs> introduce, introduce. Bailey. This is Bailey. Hi, Bailey. This is my rat bag. He's so cute. He's Aww. not. Look at my finger, look. He bit me. <laughs> that's because he loves you. Hey, that's what he does. He bites me and then he looks at me as if to say, I'm sorry, mommy. I'm so sorry. So I want to show everybody these. So all of you bloggers and posters and blog posters and YouTubers out there. So I hang these literally on the door and each one has its own little message. And so recording. It's like now we're just sort of recording. So he kind of knows that he can come, he can come in the room and, you know, cause I'm okay with that. Streaming of course means we're actually live streaming. So if I'm live streaming, he knows I'm actually live streaming and we might want to be a little bit more conscious of the noises that go on. And then of course we've got the on air, which these came first actually. And then he found the live streaming. So we also have our on airs. So for all of you, parents and people out there who want to get into this YouTube thing and maybe you don't have privacy. <laughs> um, find a place, find a space, find a room anywhere. Doesn't need to be anything special and hang it on the door. You got to go in the bathroom, go in the bathroom and close the door and hang this on the outside. So everybody knows, don't bother me. I need them. That's why I showed them to you, my friend, because something said somebody else needs this. And you know what? Yeah. You're, a, you're in a very good position. You live in a place where you offer other people ho a home to live in. You have a mm -hmm. type of boarding situation. Very unique. Very useful. Yeah. Amazon, right? Yeah. Amazon. A couple dollars each. And he really very inexpensive. And it was, but I'm telling you. Or you can you, make your own. I mean, there's and so now, oh, and he, and he knows, depending on the color of the on the air, whether or not he can come in the room or not. Red means no, black means yes. Wait, I thought it was black means. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this is just one of the fun things. And, and this is something he surprised me with, but useful, beneficial. Yes. It's about honoring someone's space. It's not about setting boundaries, but it's about embracing your own. Mm -hmm. It's not really about separation, you guys. It's about allowance. So any parents out there, any kids who are watching, you know, give your parents some time, you know, and, and a lot of parents are homeschooling. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, they need a little private time, mom. You know, there's probably one out there that says mom's taking a bath, you know, but mom off duty. I, oh, you know what? I was, I told Dave to look for one that I said like med with a meditation person, like in, you know, so all of, you know, just to have fun with it, but to show people I'm serious about my spiritual journey because you set an example for someone to, to be equally empowered, especially your children. It's getting dark in here. Mm -hmm. 
So we're gonna go, I'm gonna let her go to bed. And I love you so much, Beverly. Thank you, my friend, my mentor, you. teacher. I just, it's been such wonderful. I'm so happy Bailey showed up. Thank you, my, <laughs> my Ranger element. My, thank you so much and love you Ranger for all of the videos you did with me. If you guys are new to my channel, Ranger was eight years old. He transitioned on the day after Christmas uh, of 2020, just this last one. And really unexpectedly, I really thought I had a lot more time with him. And, but you know what? He, he brought me to where I needed to be. He, he, and he even told me that in his transition, he's like, mom, I, 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 I did my service. This was our our agreement that I brought you where you needed to be. I guided you. And he, yet he guides me every day, still talk to him. Um, he tells me things. Uh, so be open to that, be open to your animals, more and more of us, as we understand, as we open up to our psychic abilities, our animals are the first things we're going to hear messages from. So no, you're not crazy. Yes, they do talk. Mm -hmm. So do the plants, the plant kingdom rules, rules, you know, we're, it's our vibration that needs to raise up to the plants, not the other way around. So when you're well, they out were here before us and they will be here long after us and they are our teachers mm -hmm. and our students. So I could talk forever because this is what I love to do. Just speak, speak your joy. Is there anything you'd like to say before we close out? Besides, mm -hmm. I love you. I love you. Thank you for this co-creation. <laughs> it has been <laughs> my honor to be part of your every moment. Yes, and he tells me that every day. Thank you for, I, I look forward to spending another day with you and I'm honored to be part of your every moment and I'm grateful for every, every moment. And he does a blessing every meal and includes that in the meal um, and includes me and all of that. So um, revere each other, revere the time that you have with each other and honor each other. And, and is there anything you'd like to add Beverly before we close out? I just, I could talk forever. I just, <laughs> I, know. I know another time. I know. Thank you. No more. And thank you. Thank you for joining us today and being with us and, and thank you for doing it scared and coming out of your comfort zone and just this has been amazing for me and um so we look forward to more interactions like this with all of you and if any of you want to share your stuff your story um your process we're always open to that we're going to be doing more and more hangouts we've started several a few other youtube channels as well that we're going to be branching things out and sharing things in a little different ways um, that are sort of an extension of the languages of lights and open contact. And so I look forward to all of that. We love you very much. We love you, Bev. Until another time, mahala, shalom, namaste. Ni akoshe feseo, somonto la keshe, saite ki gia sose, somoto veshehi lanate. In grace, gratitude, and honor. Much love.